lesson 4.2, we're going to break into, I think it's three different lessons. So you'll have homework each day. I think for the most part, pretty much get through each lesson. So we're going to be looking at each of these. Now, as we talk about trig functions, this is basically just a geometry view of our trig functions, what they each mean, how we work with them, how they relate to the right triangle. So we've got to review this today and know it. Now, this was a Miss Byers thing, the great Indian chief, Sokotoa. What's Sokotoa mean? Okay. Wait, no, you split it in three. There's sine. And what does that sine S O H mean? Sine opposite. what? Okay. So in other words, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. One of the few times you'll see me write the words all the way out. The first time we do it in notes. Okay? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's from the so in Sokotoa. Next part. The so ka. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And toa. Opposite over adjacent. Tangent is opposite. Over adjacent. Okay? So those are your three basic trig functions that you have to be aware of, right? Now, let's take a side moment and let's go over here and talk about this triangle. We just talked about opposite hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, opposite adjacent. Okay, here's a right triangle. We have this theta angle over here, yes? What do you know about these sides? What's what? Uh, okay, so we're getting the easy one out of the way. The hypotenuse, yes? Even before you le learned trig functions in geometry, you've been talking about the hypotenuse since middle school when you first learned the Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, so hypotenuse is the angled side. I describe it as the side that is opposite the right angle. It does not touch the right angle. It's the angled side. But depending on how you draw your triangle, you can't really go by that. Okay, what else do we know? The opposite. So this is, our this is our angle of reference. So when we talk about whatever our angle is, in this case we're talking about the angle being here, the opposite side is the one that is opposite, so it's across the triangle from it. So something that is opposite is the side that does not touch the angle in question. And so then by process of elimination, <laughs> by process of elimination. I don't even know how I said that because I don't even know. <laughs> what do we have left here? Adjacent. The idea, guys, adjacent is next, next door. It's your next door neighbor. It's next to the angle. So adjacent is a side that is touching it's the adjacent. angle in question. Okay. So. That's where we're at to begin with. Now, I don't know how much you talked about the reciprocals, but that's what they are. We now have cotangent, secant, and cosecant, which are the reciprocals of our first three. Cotangent. What do you think cotangent pairs up with? Tangent. So cotangent and tangent. This is the one obvious pair. The other is not so obvious. But so cotangent, often or abbreviated as COT, 
is the reciprocal of tangent. So if tangent is opposite over adjacent, cotangent is adjacent. I'm going to abbreviate here over opposite. Now, now it gets less obvious. Okay, you have to mix and match here. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And then that means in the end, what about cosecant? It is the reciprocal of sine. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Okay, guys. Now, my opinion is, if you know Sokotoa, which should be coming back to you pretty easily, okay. right? Okay. Then, if you know Sokotoa, then you just have to know the reciprocals. Cotangent pairs up with tangent. And then what I always look at is the other, tangent and cotangent are the opposite because they're both tangent. The others are opposite, okay? Secant pairs up with C, the S and C pair up, and the C and S pair up. So secant pairs up with cosine, cosecant pairs up with sine. Or you're not matching, I mean, I guess the key is don't try and match cosecant with cosine, okay? So I always just think it's the opposites, the S and the C. I know sine and cosine are part of the original batch. I know secant and cosecant are part of my reciprocal batch. So I mix up the letters. Okay? There's an acronym that's KO Shetro. Yeah, I'm going with mine. <laughs> okay. That's crazy. Now, example one. Use the following triangle to determine the six trig functions of the angle theta. So this one problem is going to have six answers. Now, it's one problem. Six answers all connect here. Okay, what do we know here? Uh, we have to find the hypotenuse first. Okay, we have to find the hypotenuse. We're missing the hypotenuse, aren't we? How do we find the hypotenuse? Ah, can we use our Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals... C squared, so what do we have? Two squared plus three squared, those are our legs, yes. Mm -hmm. Equal our hypotenuse squared, so. You're not doing anything with this, you're fine. Okay, so my hypotenuse here is going to be square root of 13. Now, my opinion is, let's go ahead and label what's what. The 2, the 3, the square root of 13. Well, I guess we already talked about one of them, didn't we? The square root of 13 is the hypotenuse. Because one of the first things you guys said is we need to find the hypotenuse. Okay, so that piece right there is the hypotenuse. My given angle theta is right here. That's my reference angle we're using. So what do we know based on that? Okay. The one opposite theta is 2. And what's that make 3? That is the adjacent side. Okay. So I need six answers. I'm going to go in the order that my answer key is going to go in. I always start with sine. What do we know about sine of theta? Opposite over hypotenuse. So what are we going to have here? Two over square root of 13. Okay. After sine, I usually go for cosine. And what about cosine? Adjacent over 
adjacent over hypotenuse, so we're going to say 3 over square root of 13. And after cosine, I'm going to go for tangent. What do we know about tangent? Opposite over adjacent, so? 2 over 3. Now, what I set up is I do a next column, and this is how your homework, your answer key is going to look. So if you want to be have easy grading tomorrow, I'm suggesting you set it up like this, okay? Next assign, I do the reciprocal function. Which one, which function is the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant. Okay, it's the one, mix up your S and C, right? So it is cosecant. Cosecant is abbreviated CSC. And you can see that up top of your notes, right? Yeah. So what is cosecant of theta going to be? Uh, square root of 13 over 2 because sine was 2 over square root of 13. So cosecant is square root of 13 over 2. Easy enough? <coughs> What's the reciprocal function of cosine? Secant. Secant. SEC is the common abbreviation. What is the secant of theta? Square root of 13 over 3 because it is the reciprocal of cosine. And what is the reciprocal function of tangent? Okay, I'm going to go with cotangent, which is what I was actually looking for. But you guys gave me all the other answers. Okay, so cotangent which cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite, or the reciprocal of tangent, which is going to be three halves. Right there are your six answers. Each of your nine homework problems either have five or six answers. So two through 18 evens is nine problems. Each of your nine problems is either like this, which has six answers, or the next problem, which is going to have five answers. So you're going to have like 40 homework answers, but nine problems. Okay. Questions on this one? Oh, and I was just double checking. So the answer key does not rationalize, meaning I left square roots in my denominator, yes? And the answer key did not do that or did not change that. Okay, let that answer keys. Now, what I will say is if there were any perfect squares within problems, they did simplify those out. Okay, and I don't know that we'll have that pop up, but it does pop up in homework a little bit. So watch out for perfect squares. You know, for instance, if you get square root of 24, what do you know about square root of 24? Six and four. Six and four. So square root of four is two. 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 So two square root of six. The answer key does do that kind of stuff, okay? But it does not rationalize. So pros and cons. Okay, first example easy enough? Yep. Okay. Assuming that theta is an acute angle in a right triangle, find the remaining trig functions given that cosine of theta is 5 sevenths. So, we want... The remaining trig functions. How many did they give me? Two. One. One. So how many do I need to find? Five. Thus, every homework problem has five or six answers. Now, what does cosine tell me? Okay. It tells me adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, I'm a picture type of girl. So I'm going to draw a picture. <laughs> now, the only thing that matters about the picture has to be a right triangle and an acute. So both angles are going to be acute. Okay. Actually, you couldn't even have. I don't even know why they say. You can't have a right triangle with an acute or with an obtuse angle. So it's not possible because... If 90 degrees is part of your right angle, the other two angles have to add to be 90. So it's not possible. Yeah, it can't be up to. Anyways. Okay. Pick theta to be one of these two angles. I'm going to pick theta there. 
Okay? If you want to pick theta for the other one, go for it. If theta is there, what do we know? The opposite is the Okay. Opposite is across. We don't know that. We do, however, know adjacent, which is 5, and hypotenuse, which is 7. What about that opposite side? Pythagorean theorem. Okay, Pythagorean theorem. What are you doing in this Pythagorean theorem? 49 equals 49. A squared plus 25 squared. Okay. Each, each of us our own, right? Because we're all doing it differently. So some variation using A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared plus 5 squared equals 7 squared. So 49 minus 25, which is... 24, so A is square root of 24. When I gave that example earlier, I totally forgot this was the next problem. <laughs> I really did. So for A, we want to talk to square root of 6. Okay, let's set this up and get our answers. Sign. Okay. Two square root of six over sagamum. Seven. Because it's opposite over hypotenuse. What comes after sign in my list? Two square root of six over Okay. You guys skip. We already have cosine. Okay. You guys skip cosine. Understandable. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm setting this up the same as I set up up above. I'm just leaving the cosine area blank and putting tangent down here. Like, I'm just, this is what your answer key is going to look like tomorrow. So if it makes grading easier to do it the way I have it set up. So tangent, opposite over adjacent, so 2 square root of 6 over 5. What's the top of this column over here? Cotangent. Yes. Cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And what's my reciprocal of sine going to be? 7 over 2 square root of 6. What am I going to put below cosecant? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine was 5 over 7, secant is 7 over 5. Seven over five. And the reciprocal of tangent is... Cotangent, which is? 5 over 2 square root of 6. 5 over 2 square root of 6. And there are your five answers. Okay? Your homework is page 328. 2 through 18 evens. Unless you feel like doing 2 through 18 all. No, no, no. Okay? Now, as I said, every problem is going to have five to six answers. Practice, know what you're doing, okay? Okay.